What's up everybody? Welcome back to the KS Moto Cafe. So today we got the Harley Davidson Nightster 975. It's actually a lot earlier than I anticipated because usually it takes a while for new motorcycles to come to Canada but there are two versions one in black and one in red and today I get to test ride the one in red which is smoking hot. Now if you guys have seen my video on the pros and cons leading up to this, then you know exactly what I'm going to be looking for for this test ride review. The first thing I'm going to be looking at is how does this bike handle in terms of performance and comfort. And then I'm going to talk about how do I look on this particular motorcycle with mid controls and then compare it to side by side with an Iron 883, which is what I believe the Harley Davidson motorcycle company is trying to replace this with. And then lastly, what I'm going to be talking about is who is this bike for? Is it for a beginner rider? new rider someone who wants a Harley Davidson as their first bike but don't want to break the bank or maybe it's just somebody who wants to upgrade from their iron 883 or perhaps rebel 500 so without further ado let's get going it's kind of lacking a bit of character I'm not really getting the sense of a Harley vibe from this motorcycle Oh man, this is not a traditional Sportster! Holy sh... I'm gonna say that this bike is a very unique breed of Harley Davidson motorcycle. To start things off, first I want to say thank you to Barnes Harley Davidson dealership here in Victoria. And if you are looking for a new motorcycle, please contact Jason who is my new contact for Harley Davidson here. My friend Steve has unfortunately left the Barnes Harley Davidson dealership. However, I have been given a good handover to Jason who is becoming a good friend of mine for all things motorcycle related. Now, as I approach the bike here, it looks very similar to the Iron 883. In fact, the seat feels just like my Iron as well. So they did a pretty good job on mimicking what an Iron 83 should look like, which is good. It has a bit more of a roadster type of dip on the handlebar because it's slightly lower than my Iron 83. But other than that, it feels like a pretty decent bike to go on. The seat height is 27 inches off the ground, which is slightly higher than the Iron 883, just by a little bit. And I can comfortably flat foot this bike with my 30 inch inseam. Now the instrument cluster and all the buttons mashup is slightly new to me because it's not what I'm used to from my Iron 83. As you can see in the center here, we got the analog speedometer and a digital tachometer with the fuel gauge in the center. I'm actually a fan of this design. I know a lot of you guys enjoyed the Sportster S's TFT display, but to me, I like the old school design of this with a slight increase of technology by giving us fuel gauge, which used to be an extra mod for the Iron 883. This motorcycle, as I talk about later on, is, isn't really geared for hardcore traditional Harley riders. Therefore, they have put the indicators on the left hand side and you'll see more of that on the Revolution Max engine motorcycles such as the Pan America and Sportster S which all have their indicator buttons on the left side. Now, this motorcycle has three modes. As you can see, the button here as mode. We got rain mode, which is indicated with a cloud and the rain symbol. And then you got the road mode, which is the road sign there. And then the sport mode. There is no customization mode like the way you have for the Pan America or the Livewire. And if you're just starting things off on a motorcycle, the rain mode is the most tame. And I'm going to be trialing all three of them to give you guys first-hand experience on what those three modes feel like. And if you are new to this channel, thanks for coming by. KS Moto Cafe's motorcycle reviews are a little bit unique in a sense that I am just providing you my personal experience as a beginner rider on a motorcycle and give you guys some feedback on whether or not I recommend it for a new rider or something else. So with that said, let's turn on the engine and then do a friction test around Barnes Harley Davidson dealership here. And then we'll go on the city roads, check out some of the scenery around this area and then hit the highway to see how it performs. All right, let's get this going. How do I turn this on? Okay, so there's a button up here that turns on the ignition. Here we go. Whew. It definitely has a different sound characteristic compared to the Sportster S. And I'm probably going to compare this motorcycle with Iron 883 and the other sports that's already previously made. Doesn't really rev at all. Let me just back up here. The riding ergonomics seems a little awkward. All right, first gear. Here we go. 
Whoa, definitely lighter than my Iron 883 by a good 80 pounds. Harley Davidson improved the riding characteristics by putting the fuel tank underneath the seat. Unlike the traditional Harley bikes where you have a fuel tank right between your legs. So what you see between my legs right here is actually just an air box that's shaped like a peanut fuel tank. But by having the fuel tank underneath your seat, it lowers the center of gravity, which makes the bike a lot more flickable. Now the bike feels really smooth and it's pretty easy for me to get used to this bike already. The handlebars feels a lot wider than it looks. I'm not sure what contributes to that feeling, but I can tell that my rider stance is definitely a little bit more aggressive than my Iron 883. And I'm gonna give you guys a good side-by-side -side profile with the Iron 883 later on when we do a side-by-side -side at the end of this review. But so far, it's a pretty easy ride. So let me just uh, put it on neutral, see how hard it is. Oh, first try. It's pretty easy to find neutral there. Okay, let's turn the engine off. Boop. And then let's change some of the batteries on my GoPro and then get ready to go. Few moments later. So let's get on this motorcycle and see what it feels like on the open road. The handlebar mirrors, I'm not the biggest fan of them. I know some people like them, but I like the traditional side view mirror that's on top. But style wise, these uh, circular mirrors actually look pretty cool. This rain mode is really tame. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of it, but the lean of this bike, holy. What's up? Yeah, this bike definitely has a decent lean angle. It's 32 degrees compared to my 27, 28 degrees from my Iron 883. So hell yeah, that's awesome. I'm gonna quickly switch to road mode. You see that? I did that on the fly. Now let's see how that feels. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really liking this road mode either. It's kind of missing the, the low end torque, I find. Let's see, change to sport mode. Yes, I think if you're getting this bike, just start off on sport mode, because that's what's giving you a lot of pep. Yeah, it's definitely jumpier now. Yeah, the lean angle of this Nightster 975 is amazing. I wish I was able to bring this bike to a track day because when I brought my Iron 883 to a racetrack for my cornering course, I was scraping pegs left, right, and center. Yeah, the sport mode is definitely a lot better than the rain or the road mode. I'm not even sure why Harley Davidson bothered putting those two modes in. Now, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, this bike does not feel very intimidating, to be honest. Given that the specs of this motorcycle for torque and horsepower is way more than my Iron 883, I'm actually feeling pretty confident on this bike. I'm just telling you as a beginner motorcyclist that out of all the bikes that I have test ridden, this actually feels really comfortable and pretty easy to learn. One of the key differences on the Knights 975 compared to the Sportster S, the bigger brother of this motorcycle, is that in the rear, it has dual rear shocks compared to a mono shock. So let's see how the speed bump feels on this bad boy. Okay. You can definitely feel it, and I didn't adjust the preload on this motorcycle, but I can tell you it feels a lot better than the Sportster S was. So that's a good improvement. In terms of handling, as I mentioned before, it's very responsive in terms of being able to flick this bike left, center, right. Like, yeah. It's definitely not the same Sportster from an Evolution engine for sure because those things feel heavy, but this bike feels super light, which is great because that's what Harley Davidson was going for. I would almost say as I'm riding right now, it's kind of lacking a bit of character. I'm not really getting the sense of a Harley vibe from this motorcycle. I think it has a lot to do with the characteristic of Revolution engine, which is not vibrating at all. Usually when you look at my Insta360 camera, it's vibrating crazy where I'm not even sure if it's actually capturing really good footage. On this one, it's like perfectly still, even when I'm going over the bump. So the front and rear suspension is doing its job keeping the bike very well balanced. And at the same time, the motor, which is part of the frame of the bike, it's buttery smooth that it's kind of losing that character of being a Harley. And maybe that's what Harley-Davidson Motorcycle Company is trying to do for the new Sportster lineup. 
because generally the sports of the lineup is a starter Harley where new riders or first time Harley Davidson motorcycle owners gravitate towards because the price point generally was more affordable and the spec sheet shows not so intimidating specs compared to its Milwaukee 8 soft tails which starts around 1700 cc's for displacement. So given all that it's possible that Harley Davidson was looking for more European and Japanese bike lovers who don't generally enjoy all that rumble and vibration from traditional Harley bikes and looking for more quality and a bit more finesse which this bike definitely feels like. Now before I get on the highway another thing that I want to look out for is how does this mini fairing in the front how it's going to perform in terms of deflecting the wind. I doubt it's going to do anything considering the Iron 1200 which also had a mini fairing didn't really do much other than making it look good. In terms of the controls and the handlebar layout I must say it's very similar to the Street 750 which uh, Harley Davidson cancelled a couple years ago. So when I first saw that I was a little afraid that perhaps the Nightster 975 is new version of the street models instead of a new version of a Sportster but being on this bike right now and seeing it in person I can tell you right now it is not the same bike as the Street 750 series but is this a good replacement for the Iron 883? I don't know I'm gonna have to finish my ride first and then give you guys the answer at the end of this yeah the acceleration on this bike is definitely less than the Sportster S and I'm gonna see if I can just like rip away from here onto the highway Oh man, this is not a traditional Sportster! Holy shit! <laughs> I find that all Revolution Max engine motorcycle just gives me this adrenaline when I'm on the highway. It's such a smooth engine. Oh boy! Now, as expected, the mini fairing does absolutely nothing to block the wind, especially when you're going this fast. But, the ride itself, the enjoyment of the ride itself, is so much better when you're on the highway and you get the freedom to just launch. Whew. Now, I'm still having a hard time finding the characteristic of a Harley engine. I really don't feel like I'm on a Harley Davidson bike. And to some people that's a good thing because they're all they're looking for potentially is just the performance and a good looking bike. And I can tell you right now, this Nightster 975 is a good looking bike. Now let's exit the highway here and go on the city roads. So we already talked about its suspension and how it feels. I would say it definitely feels better than the Iron 883's uh, stock shocks. I mean, I really certainly hope so considering it's got double the suspension travel. In terms of the seat itself, I'm going to say they're about the same. It's nothing to brag home about. I would personally upgrade the single seater. But given that the fuel tank is underneath the seat, I'm not exactly sure how many aftermarket seats are out there that you can put on to the Knights 975 currently because you'll have to match it with the hinge on the bike. In terms of riding ergonomics, my legs feel very similar to the Iron 883 where it gives me a good 90 degree angle. The handlebars are slightly more forward so I have a bit more aggressive stance and I can tell you that I have a little bit of a bend on my lower back. But other than that, it's actually a pretty comfortable motorcycle. In terms of performance, you saw how I reacted on the highway. It definitely gives you a lot more power that you have desired on the 883. And and the acceleration is phenomenal on the highway. But on city roads, I find it a little lacking in the first and second gear. So the takeoff is slightly slower than I had imagined for this particular motorcycle. In terms of brakes, although we all wanted dual disc front brakes after riding the Sportster S, which has the same single disc brake with four piston Brembo calipers, it does its job adequately. So I'm not too fussed about the Nyster 975 also having single disc front brakes with the Brembo four piston calipers. However, what I noticed was that the rear brakes actually was downgraded to a single piston caliper rather than a dual. So even my Forster Iron 883 has a better rear brakes than this particular bike. And I can definitely feel that when I'm trying to brake with the rear brakes, it's not really biting on to anything actually. So that part's kind of annoying. 
I'm not sure why they decided to go with a single piston rather than a dual, but that's what I noticed when I looked at the specs and this test ride confirmed that it's a shittier rear brake. In terms of flickability, it's definitely the most flickable Sportster I have ever ridden. So props to Harley Davidson on that to engineer a bike that is easily flickable and does not feel like a 480 pound bike. But the biggest kicker for me was having that six speed. It's something that all Sportster owners have been really wishing for and we finally got a Sportster that has six speeds. Unfortunately, it's not with the Evolution engine on it, but given the circumstances of the world today, and how strict the emission standards are, I will take a Revolution Max Sportster with the six-speed transmission. Now, do I recommend this to a new rider? Yeah, you know what? I can see this bike being a beginner rider bike because how tame the rain and road mode was. And even the sport mode is slightly jumpier, but once you get the hang of it, I think you'll be able to ride the sport mode as well as a beginner rider. The one thing that I'm not getting used to right now is these side view mirrors it's kind of in my blind spot with my full face helmet on so for me to actually get a good look on the mirrors i have to dip my head to get a good view on what the mirrors are looking at and if i'm doing that I might as well just do a shoulder check the other downside of this bike that i don't really like right now is the sound it's uh it's all engine sound i'm not hearing any exhaust at all it is very quiet i would say it's a lot quieter than the sports rs so I'm curious to see what this bike could sound like with aftermarket exhaust. I know from the Harley Davidson launch video, there were different examples of customized Nitzer 975 and some of them did sound pretty decent, but right now as stock, it does not sound good at all. But so far, nothing about this bike is intimidating or scary. Not like the way I felt on the Sportster S. It's definitely a bike worth checking out if you are a new rider and you have the money for it. I'm not going to touch too much about the cost of this bike. I already mentioned what my thoughts are on the previous episodes. If you can afford this bike, you can afford this bike. That's all I'm going to leave it to it. Now we're coming back to Barnes Harry Davidson dealership here and I'm going to do a quick side-by-side -side with an Iron 883 to show you guys what it looks like for a rider who is about 5'10 and 30 inches of inseam. 12 seconds later. All right, so as I walk into the picture here, I'm about 5'10 and I have 30 inches of inseam. To my left is the Iron 83, which is a picture version because my actual Iron 83 is in 5,000 mile service done right now, so I don't have it with me. And on my right is the 2022 new Nicer 975 with the Revolution Max engine on it. So getting on to the Nightster 975, it is a slightly higher seat height. This one has 27 inches of seat height which the iron 83 has 26 the difference between my iron 83 to this night is the weight difference wobbling this back and forth feels so much lighter than the sportster iron 883 given that you're gonna have a lot easier time throwing it around around the garage or just you know moving around doing slow turns in terms of the riding ergonomics this does come with mid control unlike the sportster s which goes all the way to the front so having this nice 90 degree bend on your knees is exactly the same as the iron 83 which is a positive thing but the handlebars are slightly more forward so you have a bit more aggressive stance where you are bent like forward and it gives you that little bit more of a sporty style and i would almost say that this riding stance is very similar to the roadster that i had the chance to ride but if you're looking at the rider's triangle from the handlebar to my ass to the foot peg it's not a perfect right triangle like the way i have on the iron 883 but a slight compressed triangle where your lower back is slightly bent as explained on the right itself, this mini fairing here does absolutely nothing for wind protection, but it does make the bike look a little bit sexier. So overall, after having a good decent test ride on the new Nightster 975, I'm going to say that this bike is a very unique breed of Harley Davidson motorcycle. If you are coming from an Evolution Sportster like myself, I don't think it's going to win your heart because it is missing a lot of that Harley characteristic that you have grown to love from an Evolution engine. However, if you're the type of person who have gone on an Evolution engine Sportster before and realize how much you hate the bike based on its rough riding characteristics as in it vibrates a lot, it doesn't like to turn, and it doesn't like to go, then 
this Neister 975 might actually please you because it doesn't have much of the characteristics that you get from an Evolution Sportster. This bike leans really well, turns really well, feels very light, doesn't like to make a lot of noises, and it is super smooth. There is no vibration whatsoever. So someone who's looking for a performance-based motorcycle, then this Neister 975 might be just the one for you from Harley-Davidson Motorcycle. So with everything said here on this review, I would say good job Harley-Davidson for trying something new and hopefully this will attract a lot of new riders out there who never really care for Harley-Davidson's older characteristics and just loves motorcycles in general because if you look at it, it is a very good looking motorcycle. If you guys like this review, please click that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so and like always, ride safe, ride prepared, ride on. Peace. Ice in my veins, I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stopping this flame